Hey traders, checking into the stock market today. So we had a morning bounce. It was actually very much like yesterday's start to the day and end to the day. The difference was we had a much more rapid and aggressive decline into the close. Bears are very confident in the short term. Let's check out some charts. So if you look at the percentage drops on our sectors today, you would say, okay, bears had control of the day, but not a really eventful day. Apple down 1%, SPY down 1.1, QQQ 1.3, XLF 0.6. It's not a huge, massive red day, but the context is we were very strong this morning as far as seeing a significant bounce. And again, it was the same thing as yesterday. We started the morning with our futures charts, four hour oversold not oversold bounces, but four hour bounces taking place. And again, just like yesterday, not comfortable going bullish because we're just scouting a four hour lower high. And then this morning, not comfortable going bullish. We're just scouting a lower high. We know we need the four hour trend change. And then it was the end of the day where I have not seen a controlled bear close like this since the end of the day in a long time. We could not get over the one minute EMA 12. And fortunately for me, you know, I look at that. If that happened in the middle of the day, I would have taken a couple day loser attempting that bounce, but I'm glad it happened into the close because the last hour of trading, things aren't the same. It's not as equivalent to if it was 11 a.m. and that were taking place because you see these kinds of moves where once that momentum gets going and you're running out of time, I was way less interested in trying to play this bounce on anything into the end of the day once those bears got their momentum in their favor. Started out as a solid day, but definitely regrets of not having more bear exposure into the close. I left the computer for a few hours today and I'll show you where I went wrong as far as instead of an uneventful day, it could have been a really good day. But as far as the S&P 500 futures, daily downtrend following through, daily RSI oversold. So again, we're looking back, I'm breaking up the market into pre-COVID and post-COVID and daily oversold RSI. We haven't hit this RSI level since the COVID lows. And the 12 hour RSI on the NASDAQ cooled off. As soon as that RSI cools off, I prepare myself mentally say, okay, we can see another leg down. I would have anticipated a more of a fight at four hour support here, trying to shape up an inverse head and shoulders. But again, that end of the day momentum was just an absolute smash through support drop. And the daily RSI on the NASDAQ is now oversold as well. We did get here our last low. So again, still keeping an eye out to see whether or not the bulls are able to put up any kind of fight into daily oversold conditions. Looking at SPY here, we've got SPY almost at oversold, not quite yet. But again, we, we've now lost the weekly higher lows in SPY. So we're zooming out and it's now the monthly time frame that we're keeping an eye on, 424.86, which is still another 5% or so to the downside and watching for lower highs on a lot of time frames. You know, next time we bounce on the daily, we've got a lower high every day now, five days in a row, and I'm anticipating tomorrow will be six. But next time we bounce on the daily, bears are gonna be looking for that daily lower high for entries. So same thing on the NASDAQ. So watching to see what do daily oversold bounces look like? How much retracement can we see? But knowing that the results of those bounces, we're just gonna be looking for lower highs, at least initially. And the four hour trend is a great guide now because we've been putting in lower highs consistently. There's been no fake outs in that regard. This was over the weekend where we failed that four hour trend change, lower high yesterday, lower high today. Next time we bounce on the four hour, we're gonna be looking for yet another lower high. So that's a nice midterm guide on these futures charts and looking at the S&P 500, same thing with the clear four hour lower highs all of the last five trading days. So nice statement for the bears. Again, it was a, a solid bounce for these bulls today. And it looked like, okay, we might be shifting some short-term momentum. We need that four hour trend change, but bulls are creating space. But then by the end of the day, just exclamation point for the bears, not this time around. So again, looking at QQQ's perspective and also Netflix. So Netflix earnings right now, we are down almost 20%. It is getting absolutely torched. And that was with the daily RSI already in the low 20s. Tomorrow, we're about to see probably the lowest daily RSI in history for Netflix. And we are currently trading at 408, which means we are all the way down here. 
huge gap down coming after a massive dump. The monthly chart is a waterfall drop at this point. It'll bounce eventually, but I'm not going to be trying to nail that bounce because we know earnings can take a while to settle in. But this was definitely a little wake-up call. And we see after hours right now, Amazon's down over 1%. We've got the names that are, you know, Amazon Prime and Disney's getting hit with Netflix subscribers and guidance lowered here. QQQ is still down about a percent from the close. So bears are following through with this Netflix reaction. And that's helping keep bear momentum. SMH, big drop, downtrending support line no longer in play. At this point, we're watching for daily oversold conditions for the first time since all-time highs. Bears have absolute control, and each bounce is just an hourly lower high. Yesterday, we had a weak bounce attempt, 291.46. Today, high of the day, failed to break that level. Hourly downtrend, nice clear guide. Just like we have our four-hour downtrend on the futures chart the last five days, a lot of individual names have clear hourly downtrends. And next time we bounce, we're just looking for hourly lower highs to be the result of that bounce. And we have a pattern now where bears are going to be looking for end of the day drops. Remember when we were in all bull mode, we would see strength into the close. Now, obviously, it's a lot different seeing weakness into the close. So it's a different shifting environment and bears are looking for those lower highs. And there's a lot of space now and a lot of individual names for hourly lower highs to be the results of the next bounces that we do see. Tesla holding on better than most, but we are down at this low and we're looking at 980 and 886 as two key support levels. So yes, you can definitely say it's holding on well. It was green today. It was flat. Green by 0.06%. And you look at NIO and you can say, well, NIO held on fairly well, but again, just not able to disregard the broader market weakness. So at this point, we will be watching for SPY and QQQ oversold bounces and watching how individual names react to them, but have to see the hourly trend change at a bare minimum. And that's been a good short-term guide. And Tesla hourly has been a little bit choppier because it has been holding on better, but just rolled over with the broader market weakness. The key level on Tesla, again, that weekly tightening range here. And if 886 breaks, it'll be a notable longer term shift. And if it doesn't, it's just a long drawn out tightening range. XLV still on team bear upper wick yesterday, closing near the low upper wick today. And again, that's just showing us both bulls selling into bull moves into bounces and bears jumping on them. That's what the upper wick and close at the low is showing us. So if we're still watching our weekly support of 128.35, and we will still be scouting a weekly lower high to be the result of the next bounce with a lot of space for it to be set. Financial sector, solid bounce this morning. Again, just a tail of two days. Look at the strength this morning on XLF. And all throughout here, no red flags. Something happened at two o'clock and a couple little news things came out. News came out about crypto regulations. That didn't really seem very impactful. News came out about weapons being shipped to the Ukraine from the US. That might have been it, but it, it was at 2 p.m. We had this spike up and then from that little spike up, the rest of the day, two hours was just an absolute slaughter fest as far as the day completely changing. And again, just to show the zoomed in perspective on SPY, bulls holding on just fine, healthy consolidation, no red flags, and then just the rug being pulled out. So XLF, daily support is in play. Looks like we broke it, 38.97. Tons of space for a daily lower high to be the result of the next bounce. IWM, lead bear to the downside, pointed out how if 207 to 20, 206s to 209s, if they broke, we've got nothing here. And now we're in that range where there is very little support. 202, 92 broke. So we're looking at 189.15. And again, just avoid tons of support into a void with a lack of support. And that is where we are headed. And we currently have weekly RSI approaching oversold, not there yet. Again, daily RSI oversold, but we just saw more extreme. So that's not very notable at this point. And a rejection from the high of yesterday, top fishing bears with a bit of a gift, 47 cent rejection, and then rolling over to fresh lows. Lots of space for daily lower highs. Growth names are getting absolutely crushed. ARKK bounce started to try and get going. It did hold the low. Well, broke it by five pennies, but again, just struggling to get any kind of bounce going as long as the broader market is seeing weakness. PTON, 
huge flush. I don't know what the news was there. I don't really pay attention to PTON aside from poking, checking in every now and again. PLTR tried to bounce, still very weak. So again, heading into tomorrow, if we're opening higher, bears are going to be scouting hourly lower highs all over the place. If we gap down open, then bulls will be scouting some bounces. But again, the results of those bounces, we will just be looking for lower highs. Biotech sector. So weakness, daily oversold, weekly oversold. Definitely one of the more beat up sectors, but we know it's not going to bounce if IWM can't bounce. And hourly time frame today. So missed the morning bull move just like yesterday. Same thing. Missed the morning bull move and was not comfortable because the futures chart was looking for a four hour lower high. There was a great top fish. This was my best trade of the day where I did get that top fish. So 96, 98, and we failed to break that level by five pennies. A lot of traders in the chart guys chat room were on that. And we dropped real hard and fast from that. And the mistake that I made, again, a profitable mistake, but leaving money on the table was taking selling into that. And then I got a nice bullish position and I was up nicely in that bullish position and looking for a 15 minute higher low. I did the same thing yesterday, looking for a 15 minute higher low off EMA 12. And in both instances, we bounced enough off that level to allow me to position myself break even. But this would have been a good one where if I were at the computer, a very nice 15 minute equilibrium bear break signal. But it was the kind of thing where, okay, I'm leaving the computer and this will be my anti-FOMO position where if the daily oversold bounce gets going in the biotech sector, then I will have a nice entry on that 15 minute higher low, but stopped out break even and did not have XBI bearish exposure for the end of the day. By the time I got home and back on the computer, I was not going to chase that move to the downside. So nice, clear double top and bears running with it. And again, just looking for an hourly lower high next bounce. Lots of space for that hourly lower high to form. The dollar is confirming a quick little higher low and higher high here. Whenever that happens, I don't like the clarity anymore. I go to the two-day time frame. So two-day, anything under 96.46, just a lower high. But the dollar is up near its highs. The metal's holding on well, relatively speaking. You know, considering the market dumped, gold potentially shaping up for daily consolidation. Remember that? uptrending resistance line that I pointed out, and we are butting our heads against it. I would have had it a little bit lower. I would have had it right here. Actually, no, maybe not. If we're going to get all of these tops to be hit. Either way, there is definitely an uptrending resistance line that we can keep an eye on. And as far as support, again, where do we want to draw this support line? I don't really love this anymore. I take it back. I'm just watching the daily higher lows. Anything above 1805 will be a daily higher low. And again, the big picture question, can we break monthly resistance or do we stay within a tightening range? Silver continues to stand out stronger than gold. Nice follow through. Just ripping the last three days. And that monthly resistance, 2541, coming into the picture. Lots of space for a daily higher low to form next time we consolidate. And very notable, you know, there was a, a long time where the metals couldn't shake broader market weakness and they would be dropping with the broader market. So metals bulls, again, are loving how it's looking today after continued broader market weakness. Miners were unable to withstand stock market weakness. Again, they're traded on the stock market. They do see correlations. And so a much different setup here where we, so just as an example, the low yesterday, this hourly support at 2 p.m. broke. And if you look at where do the metals stand compared to the low at 2 p.m. from yesterday. And gold is very similar. Gold did break that level, but silver not close. 2 p.m. from yesterday on silver is all the way down here. So well above that level still. But for the miners, we'll be scouting a daily higher low. Anything above 3048. And again, it's just a question of do we stay range bound on the monthly or can this be a big picture breakout? CCJ, I'm on the verge of stopping out. Potential daily bear flag here. Was close to exiting a half position, which would have been great as far as being risk free essentially, but didn't quite get a big enough bounce. Wanted to see a little bit more upside towards 23 to sell half, stick my stop under the low. So it looks like if we do see a break of 2131. I will stop out of this weekly higher low attempt. 
And again, swing size positions are smaller, so that'll be about a 60% day loser if I stop out of that. So overall, win for the bears, lower highs being sold into, daily oversold bounces on watch for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. But again, daily lower highs will be the results of those bounces, at least initially. So have to be watching the hourly uptrends. The bulls now have to prove it. The bears are confident and comfortable in the short term, and the burden of proof is on the bulls. And again, you just got to be cautious now into the end of the day, because we have a pattern the last two days, four hour bounce overnight into the morning, lower high and weakness into the second half of the day and into the close. And the question is, how long is that pattern going to maintain? We shall see. Stay protective out there. Again, XBI, bold directions, lots of opportunities still. Each day, bulls have a chance and bears have a chance. Everybody feasts in the biotech sector. Bears just are feasting more. Do good things. See you soon. So picking back up on Adventure Time, heading up the East Coast from Florida. It is August, was August, five years ago. And destination was the Northeast. I believe I was going to a friend's wedding. I grew up in Massachusetts and the foliage was about to be popping off in New England. So heading back up for there and making my way along the coast as we go with some beautiful flowers. Thought this was a cool shot of the diversity. This was all in my campsite, all the different kinds of algae and moss and lichen and cool different colors, cool different shapes, orange, blues, purples, teals, greens, all breaking down wood. And one of my favorite facts is that trees were around before fungi, and I might be getting it wrong, it's either the bacteria that break down trees or the fungi that break down trees didn't exist when trees were thriving. And so trees would fall and die and then they would just lay there and nothing was breaking them down and turning them into soil. So certainly a different kind of world back then. This giant wasp took out a giant cicada right in front of my face as I was walking down the trail. I believe this is in Kentucky at this point. I like bugs. These are furnaces from the 1700s for metalworking, just these big stone structures that allow the heat to get trapped, to get hot enough to be able to work with metals. So that was pretty cool. This is in, uh, oh man, what is the name of this? Fredericks, Fort Fredericks. I should have checked beforehand, but Fort Fredrickson, something along those lines. I think it's Virginia. I like the stuff from the 17, 1800s. I grew up with my grandparents living in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania the site of the famous Civil War battle, and I've been going there. I've, I've been there 30, 40 times in my life or more. And so we got all that history, all the battlefield tours, the ghost walks and all of that stuff. So it definitely still interests me. But a cool big old fort with big walls still around 250 years later or so. So this was just, I think it's a state park. And I was just around hanging around there and I did go back up through Pennsylvania. And this is the front page of the Gettysburg Times, I believe it's what it's called. Local farmer finds mutant ear of corn. The happy guy, there's his 15 minutes of fame, Ben Clunk. Three-headed ear of corn, front page of the newspaper. It's a simpler place. Then I hopped on the AT trail just for a couple nights. There's your shelter. And heading up now as the leaves were continually changing to the White Mountains of New Hampshire, my old stomping grounds. That's where my dad used to originally take us camping, and that's where I started to fall in love with nature. If you have children, take your children camping in a tent. RVs are cool, but take your children camping in a tent. It will probably change their life. And I'm 30 years old, and I can think back 25 to 20 years ago and how much of an impact that had on me and how it sparked my love for camping and how I then used that passion to road trip around the country and experience all these things because I was comfortable doing so because I had an adult show me the way and show me how to do these things. And if I had never camped, it's probably, you know, if you never camp and you're all of a sudden 30 years old, it's probably hard to get comfortable and to get into doing it. 
consistently. Take your kids camping. Even if it's in the backyard, it's an adventure. It's fun. You can bond and roast s'mores and have a fire. Teach your kid how to make a fire. All good stuff. That's the advice for today. We'll see you next time.